Hi, I'm Mark and this is My Keys to Music. A subscriber asked, how do I split the Nord keyboard in such a way where I can have my brass on the left side of the keyboard and my strings on the right, but at the same time, I want my brass to be in the upper register. In other words, I don't want it to be in the lower register just because it's on the left side of the keyboard where typically the lower register is. How do I get that accomplished? Furthermore, I want the sounds to be independent of each other in other words, I don't want to hear the sounds layered. I want them to be independent of each other so that I can play them at the same time, but that they're not layered, left and right, split distinctly. This video shows you how to do that. Also, if you stay tuned till the end, there's a small tip where I show you how to give more oomph to your brass sounds. All right, stay tuned. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna start the Nord Stage 3 here. I'm running OS version 1.4. If you need to know how to upgrade your OS, I have videos on that. Okay, what you want to do is you want to start with an empty program. So generally speaking, you want to use this program button and go all the way to the end. Uh, in my case, it's in the M section where I have my first empty program. Now the goal of this video is to play brass or trumpets on the left side and play strings on the right side split by C4, which is the split key. And I don't want the sounds to be layered. I want the sounds to be completely independent but playable at the same time. So let's do that. Uh, for this, I'm going to need splits and both panels and so forth. So let's just set this up. I've got panel A with a blank program, so there's no effects or sounds invoked at this point. And you want to, because this is going to be trumpets, we know that that is a sample which is going to be played in the synth section. So I'll turn on the synth engine here. And the easiest and quickest way to get to the sample area of the synth engine is to use this button here and click to the point where it says sample, which is indicated by these two lights. Now they're blinking only because in my case, sample one isn't really loaded. There is no sample one in slot one, but just direct it to trumpets. In this case, I'm gonna go to 65, I think is some form of a brass ensemble too. Now, if I were to just play that right now, anywhere on the keyboard, you'll hear that. Of course, there's no effects and it doesn't sound all that great because, again, this is a blank program we just started with. But the point here is that I've got brass sounding. Now, go immediately to panel B, and this is where we're going to put strings. So, same thing. Turn on the sound engine for the synth area. Direct yourself to the sample which is these two lights, and notice how it automatically is putting in the brass ensemble from the previous panel, panel A, so it's starting to get smart to figure out, okay, that's what I probably want, but actually I want something like uh, violins here on 25, sample 25. So now I've got violins on the whole keyboard. So now I want to begin the split process. So I'll go back to panel A and invoke my split which is just one click of this button here, and you'll see that it splits right here in the medium range. And I want it to split at C4. So in order, in order to determine where it splits, I need to push and hold this button. And you'll see here that uh, it's on split position middle, which means one split right here in the middle, and that happens to be F4 at the moment. Um, and if you see it says F4, I just click this button here that correlates with that, just kind of follow it down until I get to C4, which is right here. So that's one way to split your keyboard using these buttons here. So now I've got a split. Now what's interesting about that is the moment I split the keyboard here on the stage three, whether I'm on panel A or panel B, that split setting cuts across both panels, which in this particular example is a good thing. So now I'll go back to panel A and you might say, okay, well, that's it. My job is done. I've split at C4 and I should have my splits correct. But wait, why do I hear brass through the whole keyboard? Because I still haven't told the sound module or the sound engine where to sound within that split. And right now all four lights are illuminated. So I just need to double click. And now I have two lights on the left, meaning, okay, I've split on the left side. So now I have my trumpets on the left, or my brass on the left, and nothing on the right, because the split indicates that. Perfect. So let's go to panel B and do the same thing. We know we have violins on the whole keyboard because the sound engine is telling me that it's on the whole keyboard. 
double click, double click, and you'll now have that on the right. Now, another way to select your zones here is to hold the shift key and then select it here. That way you don't have to double click and you have a more methodical approach to it, but you're also using two buttons. So Nord gives you a couple ways or sometimes even three or four ways to do the same thing just for the convenience of the user. So now I've got my violins on the right and nothing on the left because I've only invoked panel B. So here's the key. Invoke both panels at the same time by clicking both buttons at the same time. And then panel A will have brass on the left and panel B will have uh, strings on the right, but because both panels are playing at the same time, I should have both sounding at the same time. Perfect. One last little tip. On the left side, uh, which is panel A, I might want my brass to play in a higher register, depending on the song I'm doing or what have you. So now I can click octave shift. And this is really clever about Nord. If you notice this, if I go all the way to the left of my octave shift, because this is split on the left side, the lowest I can go is a negative one because it knows, hey, you're already on the left side of the keyboard. You can't go any further. But watch what I can do when I shift up. I can go up one, two, three, even four, because it figures, okay, well, you might want the full range of the trumpet in that split, even though it's on the left side of the keyboard. So you don't get that option when it's not split. Watch, I take the split off. The lowest I can go is negative one, and the highest I can go is positive one on the octave shift. But invoke the split, and the game completely changes. So maybe I want a positive two on the octave, two octaves up. There's a good brass range. And then back to panel B, where my strings are, and maybe I want to go down an octave for the strings, like that. Now, because I'm using both panels, I have independence on my effects, including reverb. Panel A for brass. We'll go to stage two, middle reverb. Okay, so that's pretty good. Now notice, because the sample is played within the synth engine, I do have other opportunities here to add effects. So in a brass scenario, typically you want your attack all the way down to zero. Uh, your DK can be all the way so that when I hold the key, it doesn't fade down. In other words, sustain up to full. And then the release is really where you're going to have to play because you might want a lingering brass or you might want a real short release. It really depends on the mood you're going for. And then you can even um, add a little delay for the brass. I wouldn't propose that much, but just a touch. still a little too much. Like it's bouncing off the wall or something. It really depends on what you want to do. Now for the strings, um, I've got some reverb on the strings too. And then here again, you're going to want to play with this decay, attack, and release settings within your sample. Now you can, you do have the full Monty as far as effects go. I mean, you can, you can add frequency you know, and so forth. But bottom line is. So now. But I think that gets the point across. So now you've learned how to split the keyboard between two independent sounds. You've learned how you can adjust the octaves within each. You've learned that you have reverb or other effects that you can affect on either sound. And what's interesting about this is uh, it doesn't stop there. If you want to add more sounds, sound engines to either the panel A or B, uh, for example, I have brass down here. Well, I like to mix sometimes organ with brass. So if I uh, turn the organ on with panel A and determine that that's also going to be on the left split, so I'll double click that. You can't see it here, but I've got a little organ going on. Hear that? Now, I may not want it that loud, but that really adds uh, some, some beef to the bass. And just little things like that. Now, the crowd won't really hear it as an organ. They'll just hear it as a beefier bass. Because chances are you're going to be mixed in with a band anyway. So that's my little tip. 
I'll, I'll, I always add organ to my brass because it beefs them up a little bit and doesn't make them sound so cheesy. Well, that concludes this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you like this content, please feel free to subscribe to the channel and do the thumbs up and all that stuff. If, um, if you have a moment, take the survey below in the description. I'm putting out some feelers to my subscribers and anyone watching. If there is interest in me making professional training videos on the Nord Electro 5D or just the Nord Electro 5 in general, um, um, people have told me that they like the training that I'm doing and I'd like to potentially present that in a very comprehensive, let's say a three or four hour course where we learn everything about the keyboard from A to Z in a professional manner. The course would be video based and it would track your progress and it basically it would be a typical online training, but it would be done for a small fee. I'm thinking something like $9.95 a month or something like that. And you can, you know, subscribe for as long as you want or as long as you need. And then we'll start with the Nord Electro 5 as a good starting point. And then if people like it and it resonates with people and if there's a need, uh, we'll, we'll grow on that and produce more courses. So if you have a moment, take that survey and uh, give me some feedback. If you think that's a great idea, great. If you have a better idea of something else that we should be doing, let me know. Thank you.